joining us now to talk about RMB launching a new underwriting management agency for the South African taxi industry is uh, Derek Vermeulen from RMB Structured Insurance Limited and uh, MD of Commuter and General. That sounds like an insurance company, Derek, uh, the sorts of language that they use. The taxi industry, uh, a lot of people love to hate the taxi industry. It's regarded as high risk. Although it's big, it's full of issues, and uh, I sense that some businesses just stay away from it instinctively. But there's business to be had there. Oh, there absolutely is. And, you know, the, it's come out of the ground more than 28 years ago. And, of course, it's, it's not a very well-structured industry, <coughs> although there have been attempts, obviously, to, to make it more structured. So it's got its problems. Mm. But, like everything else, there's a, there's a way to, to cope with the difficulties. And uh, the, 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 the trick is getting that balance right. Yep. And this new venture with RMB is very exciting. Um, I'm going to be providing the expertise within the, the underwriting managing company. <coughs> and I think possibly, if I can just explain what an underwriting manager yeah. is. Yeah, sure. But uh, let's just put the context here. If we think about that, you mentioned 28 years. But yeah, I suppose 30 years ago, this taxi industry actually didn't exist uh, as an Pretty industry. Much. It's grown up without regulation. Uh, it's almost too big now and too powerful to be regulated, which is, I suppose, an advantage and a disadvantage because it's, you've got to find your own way in it. Right. So perhaps before you talk about the underwriting aspect, when you talked about uh, this industry and the difficulties in it, so you approach it now, you see business in it. Hmm. Uh, what is that business that you see? Well, look, it's quite simply there are assets out there that need to be protected. Hmm. Which are the taxis which themselves? Which are the taxis themselves. And then it goes down much further than that because <laughs> it's a people carrier. And you've got to look after that as well. The road accident fund takes far too long, so there's a, you've got to find a solution to that. You've got to find a solution to the, to the problem that taxis generally are on short margins. They don't make much money yeah. until they get to the point that they've paid the taxis yeah. off. And how many are insured at the moment? Um, well, look, it, it's very hard to tell because there's no stats. But if you want to say how many remain insured for any reasonable time, mm. I, I, would, I would think probably 50, between 50 and 70,000 of maybe 200,000. Well, that's certainly a lot of people <coughs> there, in other words, who are available for business if you can hit the right buttons. Sure. So, explain how it's going to work. Okay, well, maybe first if I under, explain what an underwriting manager is. Mm. Um, the conventional insurance company, anyone can find the insurance company and, and, and get a rate. But an underwriting manager is where the insurance company decides there are specialist risks that they, they may want to participate in, but they don't necessarily want to go and look for the skills to write that business. So they find that partnership with someone that has got the skills to deliver, um, set up, so, so you write in terms of that company mm. for them, and you provide that skill externally. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously to get that balance right, the partnership must, you can't, you, you can't from, uh, have a name out there that's a bottom feeder, and from the, the insurance company's perspective, they can't deal with someone that, that really just knows insurance. You've got, you've got to really have expertise in that particular area. Looking at this market, who is the typical customer? Is it an owner of 20 <coughs> taxis? Is it a one-man taxi business? So who, who, who are you talking to when you are selling these products? Well, it's, it's a good combination of both. Um, the, main, the, the, the one vehicle owner he's the easiest person to communicate with because that's his single asset. Mm. That's his business on wheels. We can't get away from it. Mm. Um, but the fleet owner, once he gets through a, a, a particular margin, he'll have 10, 15 vehicles. He, he quite frankly doesn't need insurance because he's generating sufficient income to pay for his losses, mm. to carry the risk himself. But obviously it doesn't make good sense for that because then you're leaving liabilities out, in, out there and uh, protection for the passengers. Well, what about the passengers? I mean, you think of the taxi driver and you think of his vehicle, but now you've got 15, and unfortunately <coughs> in the cases of some taxis, 20 or 25 so people in a taxi designed to carry 12. So uh, insurance opportunities there as well? This, to me, to me is, the, is the biggest problem there is because you've got the road accident fund, but of course that takes many, many, many years. Then you've got the, the compulsory passenger liability. If you want to operate as a taxi, you're going to have to have passenger liability. But that again revolves around negligence. Mm. So we have immediate problems. We've got people that are injured. We've got people uh, that need to be attended to. And that's where it's not catered for 
at all. Mm. We, we intend coming to the market with a solution. We, we don't want, uh, uh, as there is in the market at the moment, someone gets injured in a taxi, some of the, the competitors will be offering 5,000 rand mm. flat for death. But that's not enough because the scene of the accident, um, an ambulance will arrive. But that person, they're only going to go to a government hospital and then the, you, you get there and they, know they, they, they can't take them and they're running around with people that are critically injured. So we come into the market mm. with a product that is going to be attached to our... Now all of this sounds quite compelling. Obviously you have to go in at the right price yeah. that that market will accept. How do you sell it? Do you go down to King George Street in the, Harrison, the old Harrison parking garage and walk around with a set of brochures? How, how do you get out there? Uh, well, it's not that quite simple. You know, we say it's an informal <coughs> industry, but uh, the taxi ranks are very well controlled. Mm. So the, you, you don't just get to walk on, on the taxi rank. You've got to go through the, the committee, the associations, and then you're allowed to present. So you get the message out there, but mm. it, I think it's a combination of both. There's some legwork in it. What have you learned so far about this market, trying to make oh. money out of it? Oh, well, look, it, it is not even nearly tapped the way it is. There, there's, there's no reason why taxis should not be insured. But it's, it's purely financial at, at this time because the, the, the owner knows the minute he doesn't have to pay a bank, mm. unfortunately the insurance will also go. Mm. That's the first time he makes real money. Mm. But that is the very time he should be insuring mm. because now it's his asset. Right. And what sort of money are we talking about here, Derek? I mean, what, you, what are your projections? How big could this industry be? How big could this company be? Uh, is it a multi-million rand company? Oh, it's a, it's yeah. in the billions. It's in the billions already? Uh, no, it, yeah, it, the, it the industry is in the billions yeah. and, and the, the potential for insurance is in the billions. Yeah. Um, but it, it, it's just that there are such massive, massive gaps in cover that are leaving people exposed. It's interesting. It sounds so simple. A huge market that's just waiting there and there's, uh, there's a gap in the market. Is there business in that gap? And uh, you're saying that there is and you're going to take it. Thanks to Derek uh, Vermeulen.